Today we're going to be talking about some properties of parallel lines. So if two line, two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, and this first one is a postulate, corresponding angles are congruent. Our abbreviation for that is going to be parallel lines gives us that little arrow corresponding angles congruent. So corresponding angles are congruent, and you should have discovered that during section 3.1. Alternate interior angles are congruent. This is a theorem that we're going to prove. So parallel lines give us alternate interior angles congruent. So parallel lines give us this. Same side interior, same side interior are supplementary. So parallel lines give us same side interior supplementary. So when we do proofs, these are the three abbreviations you're going to use if you're using the idea that parallel lines gives us things congruent or special angles supplementary. Okay. If a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's perpendicular to the other. This is a theorem that we're actually going to prove. So remember, when we have a given and a proof, when we have an if-then statement, and we need to figure out the given and the proof, the given comes from the if part. So a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines. So N is perpendicular to L. It's perpendicular to one of two parallel lines. That tells me also that M is parallel to L. The notation for parallel lines is a little arrow, so that tells me those are parallel, and we have our little corner there, so that tells me that we're perpendicular. I'm trying to prove that it's perpendicular to the other line, so that means N is perpendicular to L. I need to prove that our transversal, which is N, is perpendicular to M. Think about how we prove perpendicular. How we prove something's perpendicular is we show that they're right angles. So let's put some angle numbers in there. If I don't give you angle numbers, you can always put those in. First, we always start out with the given. M is parallel to L. At the same time, N is perpendicular to L. And that's given. Second step, what do we know about because M and L are parallel, what's the relationship between angle one and two? Well, those are corresponding angles. Well, first I need to say angle two is equal to 90 degrees by definition of perpendicular. Now the next step angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because we have parallel lines. Parallel lines gives us what special angle pair? I just talked about it, corresponding angles congruent. Now if 1 is equal to 2, angle 1 is also 90 degrees so now I have a right angle up there that's by substitution then our fifth step is Angle 1 is 90 degrees, so if I have a right angle where two lines intersect, M is going to be perpendicular to N by definition of perpendicular lines. So state the postulate or theorem that justifies each statement. So 5 is congruent to M. Remember that little symbol, those little arrows mean that we are parallel. So 5 is congruent to 7. What special angle pair is that? Those are right angle, or I'm sorry, those are alternate interior. 
So parallel lines gives us alternate interior congruent. Six and seven are supplementary. Well, again, because those are parallel lines, six and seven are supplementary because parallel lines gives us same side interior supplementary. Eight is congruent to four. Eight is congruent to four because what special angle pair are those? Those are corresponding. So parallel lines gives us corresponding angles congruent. Six and four, what special angle pair are those? Vertical angles. So make sure you're remembering past theorems that we've already talked about. Okay, next page, find values of x, y, and z. Remember again, those arrows mean I have parallel lines. So 68 and 8y minus 8y plus 4. What special angle pair are those? Those are corresponding. Corresponding angles are congruent. So 6d8 equals 8y plus 4. 64 equals 8y. y is going to be equal to 8. I know these special angle pair, 3x and my right angle there, those are same side interior. So 3x plus 90 is going to equal 180. Or 3x is going to equal 90. So therefore x is going to be 30. Last example. We know this angle down here is 68. I have a right angle. When we have a right angle, we have four perpendicular, four right angles. When we have perpendicular lines, I apologize. We have a perpendicular line, so I have four right angles. So 2z plus 68, corresponding angles, those are going to be equal, is equal to 90. So then subtract z is going to be equal to 11. Next example. All three of these lines are parallel. So what special angle pair do I have? Well, those are same side interior. I have that right there. That's going to be our transversal. So 2y plus 120 equals 180. Simplifying that, 2x plus y is equal to 60. Now here I have same side interior again. So for the bottom, 2x minus y plus 140 is going to equal 180. Simplifying that, subtracting the 140 over, I get 2x minus y is equal to 40. I have two equations, two unknowns. Add those together. So I get 4x is equal to 100. x is going to be equal to 50. So x is equal to 50. I need to solve for y. Once you know x, substitute back into one of the two equations to get your y. I'm going to sub it into the first one, the top one. Um, X is actually 25, Marnell. 25. I was jumping ahead. I was trying to go too fast. So this is 25. So this is 50 plus y is equal to 60. So therefore y is equal to 10. Next, we're given K is parallel to L. So these are parallel lines. I need to prove that 2 is congruent to 7. So we're actually proving kind of a theorem here about alternate exterior angles. First step, 
k is parallel to L because we are given that. Second step. I know that angle 5 is congruent to angle 4 because parallel lines gives us alternate interior angles congruent. I need to get 2 congruent to 7. What's the relationship between 4 and 7? Well, they're vertical angles, so they are congruent. 2 and 5 are congruent because vertical angles are congruent. Step 4, by transitive, because 2 is equal to 5, so I can substitute 2 in, 4 is equal to 7, I can substitute in 7, those two angles are congruent by transitive or substitution. There are your lesson questions, so state the postular theorem and try and write it out in words. So please write out your theorem in words that justifies each one of these statements. I can't